Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining this very brief business chat. It is just for us to talk about business. I can see powerful people in the house. Auntie Z, good morning. Hadja Zain, Mustafa Jaji. Good morning. 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 Good morning. <laughs> morning, everyone. Morning. Welcome. <laughs> Correct. Good morning, Grand Murray, Granny Murray, Adebi, I see you. Dr. Kaite Umo, I see you. Ebuka Nichebe, I see you. Chris Chidi Kizito, I see you. Mrs. O, I see you. Ni showing up Pastor Ni, I see you. GCR, Rekiat, I see you. Jesse Nkwiri was the first person to join this morning. Thank you for being so prompt. I see you, Rashida Zeebs. I see you, Feintola, I see you. Okay, so let's just roll. Let's roll. This morning, it's not a training. I hope you know. We just want we just want to like brainstorm and gist and share thoughts about the topic of the moment, if you want to call it that way, the razzmatazz of the boardroom shareholding, corporate governance matters. It's been a very beautiful and interesting few days. And just for those who probably are still wondering, what exactly is this issue between Tony Elumelu and Femi Otedola? I'm just going to give a very quick rundown of events, and then we can share our thoughts and talk about these issues. I don't know how long we're going to spend, maybe 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes, maybe one hour. I have very distinguished seniors in the house who... who I'm looking forward to their contribution to this matter. Uh, Pastor Alfred Itwen, I should recognize you. I see you. Good morning, boss. So what has been happening? We woke up sometime around a week ago to the news that Femi Otedola bought 5% shares in Transcorp Holding. And it was like, wow, okay. And the news was that he was the highest shareholder aside from UBA group representatives, and we were wondering what's going on. If you remember sometime last year, Femi Otedola bought floating shares. Floating shares are shares sold on the stock exchange of First Bank and became the majority shareholder in First Bank. So he did the same thing about a week ago in Transcorp Holding, bought floating shares on the stock exchange. And, you know, there was this interview by channels where Tony Lumelu was asked how he felt about it. And he was like, oh, it's a welcome development. You know, it just shows that the big people trust their business judgment and they are interested in having a pie and all that and all that. And then almost immediately after the interview, Tony Lumelu, through his hairs holding, bought 25% shares of Transcorp, you know, holding and increased his overall stake to about 26.1%. And we were like, okay, we call that in strategy, we call that um, strategic res response. So he took that decision and bought that volume. And I think personally, I just felt, okay, Femi Otedola does not have any option anymore. By the way, Femi added another 1.5% to his 5% and had 6.5% shares before Tony Elumelu went and bought 25% and made his own 26.1%. And then two days ago, Tony Elumelu invites Femi Otedola to headquarters of Hairs Holding and what was meant to be like a secret meeting, of course, trust the Nigerian paparazzi, they picked it and it was on social media that they were having a meeting. And boom, we woke up yesterday morning to hear that Femi Otedola uh, uh, has been persuaded by their mutual friends, the Aliko Dangotes and all the, their, their networks to relinquish his shares and sell them to Tony Elumelu personally. And Femi Otedola said, well, it's money. So according to the reports as said yesterday, Femi Otedola requested premium payment and Tony Elumelu paid 400% premium 
price for those shares and twenty or two dollar parted ways with thirty two point five billion naira. He left. He was. He was. He he earned. Let me put it that way. He earned thirty two point five billion naira as an exit fund releasing his shares to Tony Elumelu, and then the matter has been rested. Hey, 32.5 billion Naira people. I want to say first and foremost, like people in BSG, my business community know this very well. We say business is war. Business is war. Business is war. If you can hear me and you hear that statement, if you don't mind, you can write that in the chat room. Business is war. Business is war. There is a movie on Netflix. Hopefully it is still on Netflix. It's called The Founder. And you would understand that was the root of that statement. Business is war. You can, if you watch that movie to tell you the, the story of McDonald's and how the original owners lost it to someone else who was more shrewd, shrewd. Business is war. Before I continue, I want to invite my big auntie, a board room veteran, and someone that is interested in corporate governance to share her thoughts. I would want this conversation to be as simple as possible, where possible, so that the layman can understand what this really means from business perspectives. Somebody on Instagram commented on my post yesterday. He said, many startups do not understand the rules and rules of engagement of boardroom. We just think that it's my company. I own the shares. I'm selling equity. But in the game of boardroom, even you that owns the company can lose the company to a rogue shareholder. If you remember the story of Steve Jobs, this should come to mind. So I'm going to invite Auntie Z, Hadja Zainab, Mustafa Jaji, to share her thoughts, basically, just about anything around this conversation. Auntie Z, what's your take? Good morning. Hi. Mark. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all well. Um, good. good. So I'm, I'm here with my cup of coffee this early Saturday morning. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, I think um, it's about value. One of the things that happened to Transcorp here is about value because many, many years ago when, I think during the Obasanjo administration, when Trans uh, Transnational Corporation was incorporated, mm. a, lot of us, a lot of us actually bought shares, but they were so, like, really, they were just languishing. There was really no value, even to me as just a regular investor shareholder in the, in the in the stock market and all that and it's been languishing and mm -hmm. i think um Femi Otedola, rogue uh, shareholder or whatever you want to call him so an opportunity to kind of really yeah. twist the knife in and he caught uh tony lumulu and his team napping that's the mm -hmm. thing you know right. recently yeah. been, um you know and i think tony lumulu is very big on his image and um you know, doing things properly, showing the UBA, um, how they, they're sort of growing and so on. But when it comes to trans, you know, Transco and their assets, you know, he was really, you know, him and his team were really caught napping. And it's one of the things that I think we don't pay enough attention to when we mm. own companies and, you know, we have shares out there and people mm. can actually just go and quietly acquire, even though those were like floating shares and so on. But mm. historically also, this is what happened when UBA was bought over by HBO, Hakim Belo Osage and his team at the time, I was very mm. aware that a lot of people were sort of giving money in quotes, go and buy shares and just hold. Wow. And yes, wow. and you know, so that's how they consolidated in one fell swoop and took over UBA, you know? Wow. And then again, in a way, history is repeating itself through Transco because Transco is still sort of a part of the heirs holding. You, yes, yes, and a family, yeah. yes. And you know, and I think when you look at the sort of intrigues and, and all that, you are looking at number one value, you're looking at your network in terms of, okay, Aliku had to intervene and other sort of, um, because even I think it would have rocked the Nigerian um, market a little bit. And, you know, yes. as an investor, if you're looking at international investors, they wouldn't want this kind of thing. 
True. Uh -huh. I would, they would not want this kind of thing. That, okay, somebody would just come and put a knife to you, you know, and just decide that, okay, so again, you have to look at your corporate governance structures, who is there looking after your own interest in the first place. And when you're putting out these floating shares, why are you putting them out there? And who really mm. is a threat to your company? Um, mm. uh -huh. who, who's the threat to your company that can decide, okay, let me come in through the back door. These are very powerful people. We all True. know that. So for you True. to get a 400% premium, and cash out. That's the only way we would call it. It's not he didn't earn it. He cashed out. Mm -hmm. He two, cashed out big time. Out, yeah, uh, two, you know, um, you you are cashing out from one naira something to twelve naira per share. You know, that's that's crazy. Within, you know, a very uh, just like a, I think maximum this whole transaction has been like two weeks max from max, start to finish. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. You know, um, yes, business is what well, this is not a sort of um you know it's not about oh because i watched tony's uh interview and he was like oh i welcome it I'm not, and i was like you are just lying here man you know <laughs> you better get <laughs> as we were like oh it's good for the nigerian economy and so on. i'm like mm -hmm. <laughs> but he still wants to protect his his holdings that's hence him going in to buy although well, if not i think it would have just been far too much and it would have really rocked the and yes mm -hmm. we're talking about confidence in the economy but it would have definitely eroded a bit of confidence in as much as we're talking about local investment yes, and yes, so on because we yes, don't really want yes. these high powered people coming to really rock the system like this because they have the money to do so hi so let me tell the life we did not know he had elon musk dna in his blood uh, i think all oh of them if you, get, if you if you get to know them they all have that elon musk dna if not they will be so successful oh my <laughs> goodness you know larry Olushola will always say Every billionaire is a narcissist. Yes, yes, that's you always say that. Like this just played out, boom. Yes. Every billionaire is a narcissist. I'm like, what? Where did this guy come from? And I think, and he, and, yes, and I also form. think that for Transcorp, you know, maybe they're deliberately keeping the their share price low, which is also in a way not fair to, mm. to investors. You know, so keep it at this one naira, one naira twenty something. For, it's been there for too long. So in a way, it's a mm -hmm. good thing that it gingered up the price, you know, of the of mm. the shares. But you know, we have to think long term. You know, if my share is one naira today, next year I still want it at it's one naira twenty. Yes, we we need to see a more sort of upward trend, and you know, because we want this um, share prices to be in our, you know, what do you call it, the five hundred stock share index or whatever. That Honestly, we're able to... wow, that's another perspective, actually. Yeah. So, so it's really also <laughs> it's possible that Fermi Otedola made this move to as a protest move against possibly, that. Yes. yes, because the shares have been too you know dormant for too long. Those prices are just dead, and we, you know year on year we, we really don't want that. So, hi, Auntie Z, thank you very much. You. I hope you are still online with us, yes. ladies and gentlemen. This conversation is as fresh, and I'm learning good perspectives here i'm learning good perspectives the floor is open to anyone to contribute you can just raise your hand and i'll call you up and then you can share your one or two thoughts about this conversation because it is a good thing for business owners to understand these dynamics especially when you're opening your business up to equity and having people to buy into your business for adventure you have questions maybe you're not getting some terms and terminologies and perspectives please send me a message in in the chat room whether privately or publicly and then i could i'll read out your question and somebody will answer your question so i have cko who has raised his or her hand then i will take kizito after cko cko you may proceed yeah good morning i'm actually calling from the states um my condition oh, good is good morning this. Good Thank morning. You. I had to wake up two o'clock to join. Hey, but Thank this is great. You. Thank so you. back Thank in you. the 80s, back in yes. the 80s in the States, there was um, um a period where you had what they called corporate leaders. They would mm -hmm. um evaluate your, they would ever just the same thing, they'll check your company, evaluate your assets. Usually, when your assets are bigger than your stock um listing, yeah, they'll come in, they'll read, they'll mm -hmm. um sell your assets, yeah. They would essentially mm -hmm. just um, um, clean out the assets, take a take a what's it called take a cash out, yeah, and then they make it junk. 
And it yeah. is, it's, it's good that this is happening for the Nigerian, because it's a bit of a cartel. They know themselves, they own the banks, they're just, they're, they're, they're just playing amongst themselves. It's good to see that somebody within their ranks is coming to exploit they themselves. Hmm. They, they will start to be wiser, yeah? Again, some of these mm -hmm. things are not um, in advanced or not advanced, but in, in more developed markets, mm. some of these things are, are illegal. <laughs> yes. So yes. suppressing share price, right. you know, being able to You're buy right. they're, they're illegal, you know, have more profit. Is very illegal, but, but it just goes back to the fact that market is immature and um, and the and the um, it's it's almost like insider trading in a sense, yeah. But but I think it's good because it's going to make people to wake up to like come you know these old days of just um, this this seems nothing happened to this man now um i think it was the oando uh, boys and that went to buy a jeep or so from i can't remember his name the 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 old chief you know it was the he, he, he was a minority shareholder then in the 90s yeah but he ruled like he owned the entire company they went on them they bought it from the italians and boom you know he complained and complained but they never, they, they never sold 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 it back so, so I think it's good for Nigeria, though, in my sense. Fantastic. Thank you, Thank CKO. You. I love your perspectives and especially your examples. Fantastic. Uh, Kizito, you may speak, please. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, an awesome conversation. Um, so I'm just going to add to what has already been shared. Um, awesome perspective from IZ and um, CKO. Um, I also I also think that it's a good thing for uh, um, for the economy in general. And why do I say so? When these kind of moves are made, right, they are usually made on leg legacy institutions, right? Institutions that over time are just sort of like big, you know, driving value for like the top one percent or the top two percent. Um, in the Western climb, for example, you have um, they call them. Um, billionaire activists, right? People like George Soros, um, Bill Ackman and co. What those guys do is when they see that there is an entity that, you know, is not performing, they stealthily start to buy, um, take a position, right? And when they make an a entity move, that has potential. Exactly. So their goal is actually board representation. And um, Otedala has been able to show a pattern. I mean, he started with AP, you know, AP to Fort Oil, then he exited, yes. you know, put yes. up um, Gary Gu, then there was First Bank, and now there is Transcorp, right? I feel like his grand play is really to build up his stake in the power sector. I feel like there's going to be like a massive deregulation that will go on in that space. And he's amassing, you know, resources, amassing capital for, for that move, right? So this for him is just to let everybody know that you know, he's watching sort of like building a profile of someone who can muscle any entity, right? And then um, I think it also signals to foreign investors that if they want to make any entry into like the Nigerian space, Otedala is probably your go-to guy, right? And if you've also noticed too, Tony Numeli has been doing this lifestyle entrepreneur thingy, yes, you know, yes. relating with, um, you know, David Doe and all these folks. All these things are just posturing, so to say. Right, trying to make sure that they give up this perspective of folks that are capable and all. And I think at this point on Tony trying to maintain his image is is um is very right. I think he's also trying to make sure that he doesn't seem to be like a victim of what he did, you know, years back with um um, um UBA, UBA, the U uh, UBA, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think we're still in the early days, still a lot of stuff that would still pan out, but yeah. Learning points for us as um, business owners is the fact that we need to we need to see we need to increasingly see our business as not just a a me thing, you know, my family mm -hmm. and I, right? We need to start seeing our business as playing in these kind of spaces. I mean, imagine if you have a business where somebody is injecting about two billion naira, you know, of their money into your business. That says a lot about your business, you know. So um, it's just so, some sort of aspiration for us. Hopefully, we can get to that point where some of our businesses can list, you know, on the stock exchange, and you know, we can have some of these conversations in house to say, oh, you know, we know someone who who is there, and this is these are the ant um, these are the antics and stuff happening. Yeah, thank you. Wow, thank you. One thing Antizi said that is very correct is, is that the shares conversation is all about value. 
And um, Tony Lumeli also said that on his video interview with channels. The thing is, for anybody to want to buy into your company or your business, it's all about the value that that business brings to the table, both at the product level and at the equity level. At the equity level, you are simply saying, this business has the capacity to grow. And for anybody that puts money in this business, we can guarantee that the way we are running this business, you will get your money back. And that brings us to the conversation around how you are running your business. Because it's even more about that part, the corporate governance of your business, than whether you are selling sugar or selling salt or selling air. It's about the fact that I am not running this business like it belongs to me and my children. I'm running this business because it belongs to me and belongs to you who is interested in putting money in my business. And this is very, very key. So before I take Nkechi's take, there is a Jesse in the chat room that said, I heard Auntie Z talk about Ote Dollar's move as not being good for the Nigerian economy. Can she shed more light on that with specific examples? So let me quickly respond to that before Auntie Z says you know, more about that. Primarily, just like you heard CKO, at the global level, this move about Ote Dollar and Illumelu is actually illegal. It's more like in trading. And in trading is more like you're trying to, you know, you're not going through the formal process of tendering a bid to buy your stock from the organization. You're going to mop up funds from, you know, floating shares. Floating shares are just unstable shares in the stock exchange that people can just sell. And so there's that part of pressure, there's that part of coercion, there's that part of manipulation just to be able to mop up funds from on that, it's like an underground kind of move. So where she is coming from is the fact that if a foreigner, if a foreign investor, a potential investor looks at this happens in a business, it means that I as a foreign investor can buy into a share portfolio and I can lose my share portfolio just because somebody from somewhere can just mop up funds from every other place and kick me out of the system. So that's the perspective she's coming from, the ethical perspective. You know, and that actually is not, it does not portray good light. But I guess it's a Wall Street thing because even in the United States, the Wall Street is like a shark environment, it's a cabal thing. But Auntie Z, please, you can, you can amplify your thoughts on that. Um, you know, one of the things that um, Mr. Elumeli spoke about was, you know, about confidence and so on. But yes. to buttress the point further, you said, you know, we're looking at Nigeria is always talking about, oh, we want international investors, yes. we want international investors, we want our stock market to be more robust and, and so on. However, we, we view this with a great deal of suspicion. Why did this move happen at this time, right? Yes. Um, why I said it's not particularly good for the Nigerian economy is, yes, it's about ethics, it's about reputation. You know, sometimes a lot of these dirty dealings do happen, but you know, how many of these deals do we really want? That's mm. where I'm coming from. At the mm. end of the day, we're not getting good quality investment. A lot of investors have pulled out of the Nigerian stock market because mm. of our currency. Yes. They're not getting, again, they're not getting the right value. So yes. if you have, as you said, you know, scoundrels and rogues coming in to say, okay, this is what we're going to do to make a quick buck. I don't know if you're going to get a lot of Fortune 500 companies coming to say, oh, I want to come into the Nigerian market. Yes, they do come into the Nigerian market to make good money and, you know, have equity and have a good stake and so on. But if we want this sort of, it's, it's a bit unsettling, I have to say. Yes, yes. Despite yes, everything, yeah, yes. you know, um, students of politics, students of economics who just want to, you know, really analyze this and, you know, really analyze it to the minutest detail. But overall, it, you know, the picture is not so... It doesn't sit well with me. It's not tidy. Personally. It's not yeah, tidy. It's not, it's not I, remember, tidy. <laughs> I remember Tony Elumelu said, we have over 300,000 shareholders. Mm -hmm. I can imagine how that feels that's out of the blues. Some guy just acquires majority stakes, no AGM, no, no board meeting, no quorum. Like, it's scary. Like, somebody can just... From anywhere, you can just be some some drug baron and just dump yes, money. Yes, and then he and, just... and then he made all that money 
whilst they have been holding shares for so long. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Honestly, because <laughs> and I'm not I think it's, it's that this context is actually quite quite dampening because mm -hmm. if like Auntie Z said, the shares are still like one naira plus for max mm -hmm. two naira for years, and then one billionaire just shows up and earns 12 naira per share out of mm -hmm. the blues from a rogue move. Hey man. Yes, it's, and as I, this I, other I, gentleman said, it can be it can the shares can become junk very quickly. Yes, yes. honestly. It's Which crazy. is likely going to happen, you know. I have a feeling that okay, they've cashed, he has cashed out. So where is the money gonna come from now? Because they will still need money to keep rebuilding um the whole transcorp. And yes, they've had very good um financial statements. I saw Duke Olushola talking about okay, they've done good, they've done well, and yeah. so on. However, let's also look at the Nigerian market because I've seen um I think Intercontinental also is building in Abuja. And so, on. Yeah. so that transport on its own is going to get is facing stiff competition from, you know, hey, from other you know, international hotel chains. Brands. Yes, 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 yes. And you know the thing is, the entire transcorp shares is actually being held up by the power stakes and assets that transcorp owns. Not even a, not the hotel. I saw an analysis by Professor Ndubisi Ekekwe on on LinkedIn. And he he said the entire um, profit that Transcorp you know declared the hotel part just raised just around eighteen percent of that entire money. So so yes, you're very correct. Where will the money come from? Where and the money what, come if from? Other, yeah. what, where, what if other shareholders protest by selling off their shares and say we're not interested? And it, yes, and it becomes junk. If somebody is willing to take fifty kobo for their shares and just dump the shares then you know it's going to take a while to build up the value again so this is basically parents and that just screw transcorp and to make some quick cash and this that's where it is now i'm beginning to feel that was a criminal move <laughs> oh, oh. Wrong move. <laughs> okay, let's hear your thoughts <laughs> good morning good morning please Hello, Nkechi. Hello, can you hear me? Um, I think we can hear you. Can you speak? Yes, I can. Okay, we can hear you. Please go on. Hello, Nkechi. I think her network is slow. Hello, Nkechi. Okay, I think your network is slow. Hopefully it will improve and then we can take it from there. Let me read some stuff in the chat room. Ziba says, where is the money going to come from? By the way, Jesse, I hope you answered your question. question. Um, uh, Olua Tony says, this was what happened. This was what in the early 2000s when banks and bank owners did and eventually their share value became worthless after what after they had made the money they needed. Hmm, makes sense. Sorry, I needed to find where there's where the network is. Okay, lovely. My you, apologies. You can go on now. It's okay. Okay, thank you. So I wanted to speak to um the bit that you raised, and I think is it to raised about um us companies and um hmm. Give an example of a little, not I won't call it a predicament that a couple of friends are, and I are in. And incidentally, it's a business that um, I spoke to you about investing in because I wanted to invest and you weren't very certain. So we, I did invest mm. in it. And as this whole Tunibu Belu thing is playing out, I'm just thinking of yes, we, we want to grow to the point where we are quoted on the stock exchange and we are attractive enough to attract big, mm. um, big in, investors. However, there are things that we do as individuals that might be that, that might that might shoot us in the back. So this business is mm. a is a very attractive business. It's still a very attractive business. People who invested in it are people who ordinarily are very wary of investments. Mm. However, when this thing started, because it needed to move very fast, mm. <laughs> excuse me, it needed to move very fast. Right. Some of the agreements were um, agreements in principle. There was mm. an existing shareholders agreement then. But it needed, some things had to change. And at the point, more money needed to come in. Mm. And the, um, 
the other investors we had gotten. So right now, there are just about, I think, five shareholders um, in addition to the founder of the business. Mm. And you had to have another meeting because the, the first one wasn't um, totally signed off. So the, mm. we sent, we have a list, um, some shareholders meetings to identify boards of, um, board of directors, uh, members of the board of directors, as well as to now determine how the business moves forward. And this mm. is where it gets interesting. Because it's a small business, certain roles are being uh, held by the founder. So you can't be having a business of just five people and you have, you're employing a company secretary at this stage. So she does the secretary, t- secretarial bit and takes the minutes. And at some point she, when we spoke about, okay, this is the second, this is the second um, going towards the end of the third year, what happens to dividend paying? And she's like, no, that we said that, um, shareholders will start to get um, return on investment in the fourth year. And we're like, mm. we can't be saying we're getting returns in the fourth year. One, we never signed off on that. Two, we don't remember that. Three, there are no minutes to that. Mm. And four, you can't be speaking now about a business that you are looking at because of how attractive it has been expanding and expect that shareholders will follow you moot. So this, um, from when Antizi spoke about the fact that this move was done and shareholders are left holding their shares in their hands without having a share, a, an opportunity to play into it. It made me think of this person. Right now we're waiting for the, uh, we tried editing the shareholders agreement because she sent it to us and we said, certain things don't work out for us. So one, yes. you, can't have, you can't have the founder being the person that has the sole ability to elect the chairman of the board as well as have other almost like life-changing rules on the board. Mm. So you can't be doing that when you're using our money. So right mm. now we're at an impasse and the document has gone to her lawyers. And I heard, I called the children at the side. I'm like, what's going to happen? And everybody is like, you know what? If she pushes it this way, let's have our funds out today. So I hear yeah. what Antizi is saying about you can, because of some moves that you make, you know, and I know that she's trying to protect her company, but in all of this, she still has over 50% shareholding rights. So I'm wondering, at some point, we also have to be careful that because we want to hold certain things, so we want to be, um, we want to own the shares. That thing that we say about Nigerians not willing to collaborate, if we're not careful in the way we do our own things, at the point where our business is meant to expand, we will kill it. Because right now, if we all say, let's walk away, while she does own 50% shares, if she has to pay all of us now, we can hold that business hostage. And it's a business that we all like. So I think mm. we also have to be very careful to remove our ego from mm. it because um, some of the statements that she made were not very nice. We have to remove our ego. We have to do our due diligence. And above everything else, we have to be business savvy because I've sent her some of your courses to attend, but it's almost as though she's, at least she's running it like a woman running her car business. It is my own, it is my own. So we, wow. we, while we want to play global, we have wow. to ensure that we're not shooting ourselves in the back by being very myopic in our view. You know, just wow. like what I wanted to add. Let me go back wow. inside where there's no network. <laughs> You just had to drop that part. Wow. Very, 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 your conversation has so many sides to it. The part of the business owner protecting what they call their business, the part of the shareholders having a say in how their shares and equity are governed, the part of the ego of the shareholders and the owner of the business there are so many salient conversations around these things. Because, for example, when you say the founder shouldn't have the sole right to appoint a chairman or a chairperson in the business, well, then you now look at the fact that she's the, she has the simple majority shares, which means she can veto even the board decisions by virtue of having the majority shares. So there are so many plus and minuses. I think it boils down to emotional intelligence, really. Um, the fact that you must respect shareholders, you know, funds and equity. Because at a PLC level, where prior to this Femi Hotel Dollars move, Tony Elumelu only had two, po- um, two point, was it two point something percent or so in the entire Transcorp holding. In fact, when they said he, yes. they paid out, when they paid, when they said they paid out his dividend in millions of dollars, I was like, two percent has that volume of amount. So at the PLC level, majority shareholder can have just two percent, and that is very easy to lose because then this mopping up of floating shares 
can happen. And what is 2%? One strike by Ote Dollar, he bought 5%. One strike and consolidated it in days to 6.5%, which forced to Nelu Melu to go and buy 25% through his hair's holding. So these conversations are very, very, very tricky. Very, very tricky. Ziba, I see your question and comment in the chat room, but let me take a comment from Omar Deli Boyo. You may speak, sir. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, um, sir. I, yeah, I'm a practicing uh, physician, private sector, and also um, an entrepreneur. Good. And um, I would what um, Madam Kechi said, obviously mm. privately owned companies that are trying to be run like you know plcs or things like that mm -hmm. they tend to get to this point, tipping point they may call it and develop hubris what mm -hmm. Ali was doing was the symptom of hubris because mm -hmm. she could see tomorrow she could sit down a rocking chair at home and know that the phones are coming in and she's beginning to be strong enough <clears throat> to go to the market for loans and other things without shareholders' funds. Mm. And that is a dangerous point. Hubris yes. breeds, breeds a lot of arrogance and a lot of other things. That's wow. number one. Number two, <clears throat> we need a SEC to monitor small um, alternatives to SEC, to monitor limited liability companies. To I, see totally where I totally we agree. I totally agree. And then we need uh, limited liability companies subject their uh, annual returns to SEC because at, at a particular level, maybe we can just say um, if um, their capitalization is ABC, then they can, they can go under SEC because we don't also frustrate small companies, yeah, uh, medium, mini, minor, uh, mini, minor, and medium scale. Even medium scale should go to SEC. You know, I, I don't mean SEC as in SEC, I mean. <laughs> it's like that is able to, to, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And number two, um, I think Nigerians, there's an the line in every Nigerian. Hmm. Uh, we we tend to say we want things done the right way. But whenever a Nigerian sees an opportunity, even in Europe and America, what keeps Nigerians at the cutting edge in Europe and America is the fact that the law is is going to catch up with you to the last letter. Yes. In Nigeria, yes, the yes, law is an yes. ass, and people look for ways like what Donald Trump did and has, did and is still doing in America. What are the when they had Donald Trump doing the campaign thing? He said it was just a smart. Is is the is the is the deal, the art of the deal he was practicing? Is tax returns? Where are tax returns? You know, we have a way of looking at this. But he kept on explaining. So Donald Trump has a Nigerian in him, which means <laughs> the Nigerian tends to look at hold up. And things of driving against the traffic, things of if there's no last man, I can do it. If there's no um, police, I can do it. When I say policeman, I will beg him. So there's, a, there's this feeling that I can get away with anything. Donald Trump said, I could kill, shoot somebody on, on, on as Fifth Avenue and get on Seventh Avenue and get away with it in daylight. So that's the line, that uh, the line us is what uh, the Nigerian in the line is what he did. And it's because, wow. sec, most of the institutions set up for monitoring and enforcement, don't have um, um, supervising, when they even have supervising authorities, they don't look at them preemptively. Yes. SEC ought to have smelt a rat. The day or yes. the lab bought that thing, yeah. I smelt a rat with my, with my business admin background. I smelt a rat. The next time I started wondering, they interviewed Tony, Tony said they are friends. And yeah. it's a good thing if you can encourage the external investors. That's why I can tell the But I was still smelling a rat because mm. Tadela is Kerego. True. And Kerego is even more, 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 more valuable than, 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 than yes. Afam that uh, yes. Transcorp has. And then Transcorp oil block had not been, uh, had not been exploited. Yes. It has, it's just lying down there. Maybe they're looking for a buyer. They will just sell the oil block to and increase their return on investment. So. If Girego was giving so much money, Otodala, Otodala has sold AP, I mean, sold the FFO and had gone into and, and has announced publicly that all the rest of his life doesn't work again. Now, money doesn't respond like that. He must be doing something to generate money. So I was worried when Tony was smiling and saying that he's his friend. And the next day, the stock had gone up and Otodala cashed out. Now, 
where I'm coming to, sorry for taking our time, yes. a serious sec mm. will have placed a that red flag ended. on somebody yes. like Otelier right from the beginning. Yes. I'll yes. be watching the steps. They watch sorrows around the clock. They watch um, 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 Buffet around the, the clock. Yes, if Buffet is moving somewhere, Sec is watching him. The stock exchange is watching him. And they are more critically scrutinized than the average shareholder that has uh, 2,000 shares in MTA or 500 Very shares. True. These guys are the shakers and the movers of the stock market. If they are Very not true. on a leech, if they are not on a leech, they would destroy, they destroy the, stock the entire stock exchange. After all, what yes. killed, what brought about the financial crisis? Just one or two banks in, in California yeah. led to the world yeah. to begin to experience yeah. this. Yeah. So yeah. if we don't put a leech on the rich that have excess liquidity and we don't continue to monitor them, I don't think we should frustrate them. They should be on our on our favorites contact list where we're always, where the SEC and the, 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 the EFCC and then um, and the financial intelligence unit must closely watch the activities. So when someone like yeah. Otelela applied to buy Transcom, it should have raised the red flag. What is he trying to do? And wow. then there should have been a clause in his buying. You don't buy and sell out the within next. I know days. within within days. It's suspicious. He made Honestly. him put back the stock for sale. I spent a sec to pull up a red flag and say, give us some time. Like when you apply for a loan in a bank, they scrutinize you for like a week. They go through your other banking um, accounts. They tell you to bring your uh, your last three years audited account. The bank begins to, that is what SEC ought to have done. And if you this find out valuable. in America where these things have happened, inside that dealings within SEC and NGX, <clears throat> The Nigerian Stock Exchange, inside our dealings could be responsible. So we need to, be, how did the stock market crash in 2008? From, from, from um, junk um, um, homes, uh, home insurance and home um, buyings in the US and affected the whole world. So I want to say that oh. the, the Security and Exchange Commission ought to be it's, much more of a watchdog. It's culpable in this. Yes, culpable in this. Whether it was good or not, Otodala utilized the Nigerian window. What can I do wow. here? Wow. Thank you very much. Wow. So you're, you're just on point. Thank you so much for that very detailed contribution. Thank you very much. I can see Pastor Nee's hand, but let me quickly read Ziba's comment. She says, I still fail to understand how no one kept their eye on the money. You'd have thought Enlu Melu, who's done this in the past in the banking sector, would be more careful. Otedola obviously carefully thought out this acquisition. No structure in place to keep an eye on the shares out there, which is exactly what Dr. just said. Anyway, I was looking forward to a hostile takeover, Ziv, you said. But thumbs up to them for the Green Mill defensive strategy to recover. A lesson that timing is everything in business and who you know matters. Now, and this who you know matters is, has become like a big problem for us because just like Dr. said, if the institutions in Nigeria were above personalities, this should not have is it flown or flewed or flight. It should not have happened. So it's a big challenge right now. Ziba says, my question is, what will the other shareholders do? So let's just wait and see, you know, let's just wait and see where this goes from here. But I totally agree with Dr. that SEC is, is, is sleeping because this should have been a major issue. They should have blocked this transaction. The selling of those shares should not have happened immediately. They should have put a lien on the transaction and then most likely make sure that the price, this premium cash out should not have happened if SEC was awake. Very valid contribution from Dr. Omar Deli. Pastor Ni, you have the floor, sir. All right, sir. Thank you, Coach Sam. Um, Bless you, can bro. you hear me? Yes, we can. All right, fantastic. Uh, the, the perspective I want to come in from, or I want to ask, um, mm. is that, um, you know, from that interview that you mentioned, yes. um, uh, Tony was basically even saying that besides his wife, aside his wife, um, it's only Femi that he follows. Yes, on that he follows on Instagram, right. yes. A exactly. Now, that, that shows the level of their friendship. All right, so, uh, you know, you started by saying business is war. I, I, I just wanted, want us to also look at it from this perspective. Where do you define you know, uh, define or separate relationship from business? Because I'm assuming 
based on that relationship that um, Tony said they had, um, yes. and also even um, Femi also retweeted and posted, rather, he reposted the Arise interview on his Instagram page. So yes. basically, I'm saying that that shows the level of their relationship. Could it be that um, Femi didn't tell um, Tony that he was coming you know, to do this. So my point exactly is that where do you now begin to separate, you, you know, because Tony just, because in my mind, when I saw that interview, you know, I thought Tony had probably 40% or something. So he didn't mind. Um, this guy could come in and, you know, or maybe behind there's a game plan that, oh yeah, oh, Femi, come on. When you come in, Let's, you know, if you rise up the stock, then we'll share the whatever money. So I just want to understand. These are all possibilities. In yeah. fact, these are all possibilities. Like in Kechi is also saying in the chat room, are they just using our heads? Honestly, is a possibility. But let's let's based on the information available in the public domain, the following can be assumed. One, Tony Lumelu did not see Femi coming because according to the news, he also found out on social media how we all that's found out. Yeah, that's a fact. He didn't see him coming. <laughs> so, so Tony didn't see Femi coming. That is a fact. His response is more like catch up, like, oh, more this guy, <laughs> I need to be careful because this guy, we don't understand where he's going with his, his approach. So then the, actually, the issue of friends, if you want to buy into my company today, it doesn't matter whether you're my friend or not my friend, the equity is a fixed price. And there is an allowable amount that I think I can risk to sell. In this other case, because it's a PLC and because it's a floating market, over 300,000 shareholders, of course, Tony cannot know all their shareholders. So it's not a case of, I want to buy into your shares. How many shares do you people have? On a good day, Femi is supposed to write SEC and apply for shares and get shares from Transcom. But of course, what he did based on on the, the way these things run, there are agents that trade these stocks. And of course, he has his boys. He has in-house information to know, okay, we can mop up shares for you to so, so how much do you want? And then those guys on the stock exchange will be trading and talking to those that want to sell. There's an opportunity to sell your shares. Are you interested? How do we even know whether Femi did not pay a premium to even buy those shares? Who knows? Because those stock guys can just ramp up you know, demand. It's a demand and supply conversation. So those guys on the floor of the stock exchange could have also raised a lot of demand, which may have been fake demand, no elasticity, economics, can, could have been fake demand, raised the price. These guys would be very happy to sell their shares to Ote Dollar. And Ote Dollar will mop up shares and boom. So Neolimelu was taken by surprise, like Antizi said earlier, they were sleeping. But again, let's be fair. How much can you really be awake enough to know what's happening with your shares in such a large conglomerate? So is there really a way to protect your shares in realistic terms when you have a massive flow, massive body of shares like this? Who has an answer to that? Yes, Omadeli, you may go on, sir. Omadeli. 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 All right. So, okay, um, sir. I, 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 in fact, I laughed when Tony increased the stake. It meant Tony was not reading um, between the lines. Because mm. immediately that thing happened, Tony moved and put in 25%. Yes. He thought of a hostile takeover that was in the offing. If, um, 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 was, if um, Femi, is your friend. You ought to put a call to the family and congratulated him. And mm. um, so the first, it starts with Tony not, not realizing that it was a host to cover. Tony not calling the attention of SEC. Mm. You can't buy into a massive company like that without, I know, in, like I said before, these things will be taken to concern. The fact that Nigeria is a place where anything goes. Yes. And so we don't do anything. Because like I said, it's difficult to, um, to, 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 to not to fault SEC and its complicity. It's difficult. I know they may not be uh, complicit, but it's difficult for SEC to tell me they never, um, it, this thing just happened overnight. It's not possible. You know, mm. Trans, if, it's, if it goes on like this, someone could just buy Nestle overnight. 
You can't buy so, Nestle overnight. You can't. Those people will not agree. So I'm talking about the fact that um, Tony, with his massive influence in the Nigerian um, space, ought mm. to have immediately pressed the regulator. It should have people in NGX and, and Nigerian Stock Exchange, and it should have people even relationship with SEC. Come, 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 yes. come. Yeah, this guy's my friend. <laughs> and he's buying a I need to know before I go and put in and buy because it was Tony's 25% buy in that increased the value too. When yes. Tony and 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 and, and, and um, Femi were into um, uh, energy through Afam um, and um, and Girigu yeah, could do that amount of money with Girigu having a 400 billion naira um, 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 capital. Uh, come again. You mean net worth or capital? Yeah, net worth, net worth. Mm -hmm. And Afam not doing well, at least producing a little bit. We can't see the figures on the stock exchange as strong as Gary. People have been wondering, is this about energy, electricity? Is it about oil well? What would take Femi to go and put in that money in transfer? It can't be the hotel. Looking at, the, be looking the, at the, the, the fact behind the figures, you can say the hotel. The hotel. Well, no, yes. what, what was Femi looking for? So it was the 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 slumber of Tony when even Jesus was kissed on the cheek he said you think this kiss is not ordinary by Judas mm. that is not ordinary even though Judas was a disciple he said this kiss is not ordinary um, Tony had also in the last few months been going on yachting and everything so everything was okay for him and I told the lad had been roaming around that statement I told the lad put out that I don't need to walk again in my lifetime he wasn't talking like rich dad, poor dad story that you can invest somewhere they don't work. It was, I, I smelled a rat. So going back to, to, to what, what um, your, uh, your question against, I was answering your question when I drifted. What was your question yes. against? What was your question The question against? was, how, how does a business owner protect their shares with this kind of humongous size? Yes, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say that most business owners at a particular level begin to, have somebody within the hairs holding that is starting and uh, put whose ears are to the ground or to the wall, whichever one want to use, who can hear and are studying because you have to protect your market in Nigeria. Government yes. does not protect you. We have megats in our homes, we don't deal with rely on the police, we have our wells, we don't rely on water, we have our generators, we don't rely on public power supply. These guys are very they can be bearish, they can be bullish. Yes. You can't just stay in a system like this without having your contacts on NGX and your contacts on SEC. Who yes. will tell you that the dollar is coming? Yes. And then that yes. buying of the yes. 25, it's not that yes. the dollar is going buying and selling. Yes. That yes. buying of 25% by Tony, in my own layman's assessment, with due respect to him and everything, smells naivety. Mm. Smells mm. naivety. You cannot be mm. protecting at that level without reading between the lines. But that's even your father. Your father can buy you, your father can deal with you, your brothers can deal yes. with you. In business, there are no permanent friends. In business, you're looking at the, at, at the figures. You're looking at the figures. Whoa. Yes. So, so how you protect it from Nigerian perspective? You must have insiders everywhere. Even mm -hmm. vice chancellors mm -hmm. have insiders at Whoa. national Whoa. The ministers ah. have insiders at national so rock. The politicians have insiders in all the parties. They, there's no safety. You don't take safety for granted in Nigeria. For you True. to survive in Nigeria, you must be awake. Your ears, your nose, your mouth must be awake. You don't sleep in Nigeria. When you are sleeping, somebody is Fantastic. holding Fantastic. for you. Fantastic. One thing I'm taking so away this Yes. Yeah. yes. You don't yes. sleep in Nigeria. Yes. Once you want to go to bed, you put on somebody to be alert, like doctors take calls in the mm. unit. You don't sleep in Nigeria. The moment you sleep, you wake up, Gone. Everything is gone. So I blame mm. Tony for buying that those twenty five percent and making his own become thirty one percent. He thought or Ted Lam was giving him a big hug. It wasn't a hug of a friend. It was a hug with a dagger at the back. What Ted Lam did, no matter how you want to explain it, he stabbed Tony. At the back. Even if Tony is smiling today, watch the space. Within the next two weeks, these shares will go below one and thirty cover again. And Tony left with a, with a can in his hand hanging. And shareholders now begin to cry, sec, sec, sec. How did it happen? Because we don't read, we don't, we don't, we don't smell the coffee. We don't, we, religion doesn't make us suspect people anymore, except our ancestors 
that are always suspected in generational causes. So you would love your neighbor as yourself. Doesn't mean trust your neighbor. If your neighbor is not a banker, you can love him without giving him your money to keep up you. So I'm suspecting that I'm read, read, my answer is this. If you're going to protect such a big enterprise as Transcom, don't forget Transcom also has some powerful names like Obasanjo behind it. Yes. I'm sure Obasanjo yes. has some shares behind it. NDG. NDG was there at the beginning, whether she's still there, I don't know that she has sold her shares when she was um, and, um, um, in, in, the, in the space before she went to become a lecturer. These guys are powerful enough to smell a rat and tell SEC within 24 hours, hold that thing, hold that thing. They all can. So how do you protect your shares, your, your, your stake? You protect your stake by making sure you are weak 24 seven with a dagger in one hand, with a leech on the other hand. If you are sleeping, somebody else is watching your property for you. Thank you. Wow, wow. Wow, 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 wow. This has been a very beautiful conversation. And I know we can't exhaust all the possible perspectives, but I'm hoping that everyone who is here has been taking one or two things as personal lessons, especially with respect to how you operate your business. One thing is very clear. Somebody is looking at your business with an interest. It may be active or passive, but someday somebody will want to buy into your business and may not be buying because they want to necessarily support your hustle. They may also be buying because they are rogues just to take over your business. It's a plus and it's a minus. For your business to be attractive enough is a plus. But like Omar Deli said, you cannot be sleeping in Nigeria. Especially when you have a massive investment that you have built over the years. It is very, I like what Jay said, said, I'm shocked that Tony didn't have his ears on the, to the ground, which is actually exactly what Omadeli has been saying. You cannot... have everywhere, scan, scouting, reporting, updating. You have to constantly, and Kizito also said, as retail investors, one way to protect your interest is to have a market research vehicle to constantly give updates on market activities. Alternatively, they can subscribe to certain news newsletters and platforms like Stairs and ProShare to keep them up to speed and have friends in the capital market. This one, having friends in the capital market is non-negotiable. We all need to be students of both local and international markets to focus on how activities impact these sectors. It is very, very key. One other thing we can establish this morning is that Femi Otedola has a pattern. And there are, like Omar Deli said, there are all of us have Femi Otedola in us because somewhere we're eyeing one strategy, one stake, one investment, somewhere where you wish you can strike. If you are running business, you cannot go to sleep. That is one big takeaway I'm taking from this conversation. So I'm TZ, I'm going to take your contribution as our final contribution for today. Good morning, Ma. Please, you can speak. Okay. Um, you know, one of the things that we sort of touched on is how uh, the fact that the Tony Rimul and his team kind of took their eye off the ball. You know, mm. people that are very successful or very good at doing these type of things. Like, let's look at the example of Bernie Madoff. Madoff actually had a team of people that were so in bed with people in SEC in, 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 uh, in New York and the Fortune 500 companies that anything that would rock that his boat to make sure that his Ponzi scheme was going on smoothly, he was on top of it. Hmm. So it's surprising that within Tony's team, they don't, I'm sure from now, they're probably going to create a team strictly to keep an eye on hmm. their shares and to understand to kind of you know strengthen their linkages with the people at um, SEC and, and so on. So for all of us that are also investors in the market, it's very important that we look at our portfolios. It's important we look at where we were last year, where we're going this year. Do we still want those um, the shares of those companies and so on? So we, we need to, I think, really think about, about it, it and see where the power play is, where we have long-term value in in our investment, it could be a small investment, but it could be one that gives you something, you know, yes. quarterly, half yearly. And that's yes. probably better for you than an investment that will become junk status in the shortest possible time. So thank you. Uh, that's my 
Thank you, Auntie Z. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, Kechi says, really thought-provoking session. I've been following financial disasters on YouTube and wealthy families in all climes uh, really move us and shake us, and in many cases, destroy us as they move into government and regulatory frameworks, and the rest of us are just left holding the bag. Most of us are just pawns in this scheme, in this game. Most of us are just pawns. So you need to move from being a pawn to being a game player. Very, very important. All our contributors this morning, Dr. Madeli, Auntie Z, um, Ni Shoinka, Ziba, um, CKO, Hadiza, Victoria, you were the active part participators of what's the word, contributors this morning. Jesse, thank you very much. And yes, sorry for waking you so early, but this conversation just had to happen early enough because the day doesn't, there's no other time slot I could have put this, but thank you for showing up <laughs> anyway. I am grateful that we turned up and this conversation, let's not lose the lessons. Let's, let's, let's take it away from here um, to, to everyone on this call. Thank you very much. I'm going to share this, the, the, I'll put this on YouTube and share the link in my newsletter that will be going out later. I'm going to write some thoughts about this and put a link to the replay on YouTube. So in case you want that, okay, I can see Dr. Madele has put his email address in the chat room. If you want to receive a copy, just by adventure, you are not on my newsletter. It's okay to put your email in the chat room. I'll just copy it out later. The better way would be to sign up on my newsletter. I'll just put the link in the chat room. You can just click and enter your email in the newsletter um, box so that you can receive my mails moving forward. Um, that would be really nice, but I'm, I'm going to copy your email addresses and then do justice to that. So I'm going to send that later to everyone. Thank you for joining. Have a beautiful day. Before you go, let me play just one song for you from Davido's latest album, just for you to have some, some coffee, some digital coffee. Let's listen to Unavailable by Davido.
Okay, everybody, thank you so much. See you some other time. Goodbye. Yeah.